Hello, in this clip I'll be talking to you about the spiritual language of emotion in the context of bringing your desires into the world of objective reality. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the concepts of thought causation, then I invite you to please look at my previous clips to give yourself a better understanding. You are, of course, welcome to watch this one first, but I just wanted to let you know that those other clips are available and I'll leave some info in the descri description box below. Now, in thinking about the way I wanted to um, provide or the way I wanted to build on content on this channel, I decided not to just rush ahead and just give you techniques and tell you how wonderful everything is and how um, everything works. And instead, work carefully to lay a very solid foundation so that when you know what the requirements are for successful, let's call it manifestation, you can then take this information in any direction that you want. I mean, we're talking about gifts that you were born with. You don't really need anybody to tell you how to use it, but there is some guidance that can be given in terms of understanding how you use it uh, properly and why it works the way it does. So that's why I'm, I'm sharing these sorts of ideas with you first before going on to talk about things like techniques. This subject is vast. And I'm not going to conflate different bits of information I, I, together. What I want to do is really break it down into bite-sized digestible chunks so that you can process what you're hearing, begin to apply what you're hearing, and then move on to the next thing. For instance, a desire is a subject in and of itself. And I'm not going to talk about that, what it is in this, uh, in this clip, but I'm going to talk about the fact that we use our emotions to make our desires a reality. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Now, I gave an analogy of these um, plastic containers, these hamster balls filled with ocean water submerged in ocean, and saying that do, repeating that many, many billions of times represents each of us on the face of the planet um, existing within the context of consciousness. Now, I'm saying that to say that no two individuals have the same emotional registry. We do not have the same voice pattern. And the reason for that is because each of us are demonstrating something different about the way in which consciousness can behave, can perform. So our emotional registries cannot be the same. And for that reason, there can't be, there cannot be a one size fits all approach to the philosophies that enable us to really engage with consciousness and to use it uh, for the, the desires, to fulfill the desires that have been impressed upon us. Our emotional registries are as unique to us as our fingerprints are. And so when you're dealing with this philosophy, I really want you to personalize your experience of it. All too often what happens is that people try to replicate the advice they've been given. But let me give you an example. If I hop onto Brian Scott's uh, YouTube channel, one of my favorite YouTubers, and I memorize a portion of, of a video of his and I come onto my channel and deliver that same information, it's not going to be authentic. And so for that reason, it's not going to have the desired effect. That's how it works. When we are communicating to consciousness, consciousness knows us. It knows when we mean something or not. If you think about yourself as a child, when you might've been told by your parents to say sorry, and you said mm, that you didn't really mean it, or your own children, you ask them to say sorry, and they use the word sorry, but the way in which they say it tells you whether or not they mean it, right? So this is what is happening with us and consciousness. We might be using all the right words. We might be doing all the right things, but it, consciousness knows whether we mean it or not. And because it's such um, a faithful replicator of our emotions, we're going to get the outcome that we impress upon it, that we communicate to it. And so it's really important to get to know your own spiritual voice. That's essential. I think that's probably one of the most important things for you to get to grips with. Learn your own spiritual voice. As children, when we become aware of ourselves as human beings, and we really understand and recognize our own voices for the first time, we become aware of the fact that maybe we have an accent. As we grow up, there are ways in which we put things, ways we express things, turns of phrase and so on. Uh, maybe we have a speech impediment. When you get to really get to engage with your emotional registry in this way, it's like hearing your own voice for the first time. 
And that's what I want you to do because it's this voice that you are going to use to communicate to consciousness the things that you want in the world. So it doesn't matter what you're saying, it is how you are saying it. That's the thing that makes all the difference. Okay, so having said that, let's think about how we use our emotions in terms of bringing our desires into the world of objective reality. So let me think of an example. Okay, like say I wanted to win a contest and the prize was, um, I get to go to the White House and meet the president and, and have a tour of the, the property and all that. And I think, yeah, I really, really, really wanna to go to the, the White House. So what I'm gonna do is form a mental picture that shows me in the White House, shaking hands with the president and having this wonderful experience and having this wonderful time. Very, very often what happens for the average person is that they believe, so their feeling is that the mental picture in their mind is what they are going to be able to make happen. That's not what, that's not what takes place. The mental depictions that we construct and activate through engaging, with, engaging um, in them with our subjective senses are there to enable us to evoke the feeling of the reality of that thing. Okay, should I say that again? So when I have a mental image in my mind and I engage with it with my mental sense, my subjective senses, I'm not going to make that picture play out exactly as it appears in my mind. I am using that picture to help me contact the feeling that that experience is a real part of my life. Once I have cultivated that feeling, that is what I communicate to consciousness and consciousness makes the thing I want happen. It's not gonna look exactly like that. So if we go back to my um, going to the White House prize, no matter what I think of in my mind, until I actually go to the White House, I have no idea what it looks like. I have no idea about who's going to be there, the, the security staff, the decor. I have no idea about any of those things, but by evoking the feeling of the reality of being there, I communicate to consciousness that yes, I am there. I accept that. And consciousness expresses that through me. Okay. Evoking that feeling is communicating to consciousness, consciousness that you give your consent to express that which already exists. We are not trying to make something happen. We are not performing a metaphysical prayer in a transactional way. Nothing you do as an individual, no thought that you have is capable of producing the thing you want as an objective reality. All that you are doing in this process is consenting to it being expressed through you. You are thinking about something that already exists. I hope that's clear to you. I do welcome questions on this sort of thing. So I'm gonna say it again. When you form a mental picture and you engage your subjective senses, you are saying, yes, I agree to this, not I am trying to make this happen. The feeling that is produced as a result of that mental activity is what is communicated to consciousness in your voice. And so it's so important that when you are listening to people speak, when you are reading and trying to apply techniques, that you are putting it into your own words. You are using your own voice. Someone might say to you, okay, take a deep breath in and then take a deep breath out. You might not want to do that. These techniques are really here to, to guide and support us as we learn how to evoke these feelings at will. That's what I do. I don't actually use any techniques of prayer now. I can be still and evoke the feeling I want at will. But while we're getting to that point, we use the techniques that others are teaching us. But it's important that I don't say that, okay, Brian Scott said that I must stand up and turn around and touch the ground. And Kate Jagaday said that I must put my left hand on my head five times or whatever it might be, you need to see how you feel about what you're being told and trust yourself to know that you can change that technique to make it work for you so that it feels authentic. Remember to borrow something from uh, Neville Goddard, he talks about in our name, in our nature, if something doesn't feel 
authentic to us, then we are not going to be able to communicate what we want to consciousness effectively. It must absolutely be in our nature. It must absolutely be on our terms. We must absolutely use our own voice. So if you haven't done this already, I invite you to start to get to know your own uh, spiritual voice. Learn to recognize it. And you can do that by observing your emotional reactions to your physical environment. Just notice how you feel about things around you. All of these feelings are the vocabulary of your spiritual language of emotion. When it comes to a technique of metaphysical prayer, when you read it, if you are being instructed to breathe in three times and you don't want to do that, instead what you want to do is to hold an image in your mind, do that instead. What you're doing has to be in your nature. It has to be authentic to you. Okay, so let's spend a little time today learning to uh, recognize our spiritual voice, our emotional registry, learning to recognize our emotional vocabulary. How do we feel about things? Because that is the vocabulary that we are going to use to ask consciousness for anything. I just want to quickly add that sometimes people think that you need to be good in some way or deserving. That isn't true. All you need to do is use your own voice to ask consciousness for what you want. It's very, very different. Okay, if I do it exactly like Neville said, if I do it exactly like Kate said, if I do it exactly like Joe Bloggs or Jane Smith said, then I'm going to get the results. No, what you're telling yourself is, I don't have this thing and I really want to get it and I'm going to use this technique to help me have it. That is not what consciousness is saying to you. When consciousness impresses a desire on you, consciousness is saying, I'm ready to show up as something else and I've chosen you to be the conduit to that. And what you need to do is say yes and mean it. And you can only say yes and mean it when you know how you speak using the spiritual language of emotion. So let's end it here. I'm feeling that I need to say more on this subject, but I, as I say, I just want to break it down into chunks, into portions, so that you can begin to think about these ideas, begin to think about your relationship to this philosophy and this way of life, and think about who you are. Remember, you are an individual, unique individual, in a global cast of characters of billions, and you have been selected to show some aspect of consciousness that is distinct and separate from all of your brothers and sisters who exist alongside you in consciousness. So have fun with this today and I will see you in the next clip.